Hello friends, today we are starting our lecture series for the topic internal security. Internal security is important part of our syllabus for GS paper 3. Every year we are seeing at least one or two questions coming from this portion. So let's have a look at the syllabus which is provided to us by the UPSC for internal security. We are expected to know the linkages between development and spread of extremism. Challenge to our internal security posed by the external state and non-state actors. Challenges to internal security through communication networks. Here, technology is also a threat to our internal security. The role of media and social networking sites in internal security challenges. The basics of cyber security. It is an important topic. Money laundering, that is financial security, is also needed. We are expected to know its prevention also. Security challenges and their management in our border areas, linkages of organized crime with terrorism. Various security forces and agencies and their mandate. We are expected to know their structure and how do they work. So let's begin with these topics. In this lecture, we will be dealing with mainly with these two topics and a broad overview of them. So let's begin with this first lecture in this series, which deals with the internal security scenario in India. What is the meaning of internal security? It is uh, written as our fundamental duty also. It is written in our constitution to maintain sovereignty, integrity, and unity of the nation. This is the actual meaning of the internal security. To ensure that the, no individual or any organization is doing any act which can threaten the integrity and sovereignty of our country, Anything which is against the political and economic interest of our country to be considered to be a threat to our internal security. For this, we should know the political administrative setup in our country. Political administrative setup in India is federal in nature. What do we understand by the word federal? The concept of federation is based on division of powers. But with the powers come the responsibilities. It, is all, it also deals with the division of responsibilities between the central government at the union level and the state government at the state level. There are two important responsibilities which are divided. Maintenance of law and order is the state government's responsibility. And the, while the maintenance of internal security is union government's responsibility. This is the uh, division of responsibilities between the law and order maintenance and internal security maintenance between the state and the union government. Maintenance of law and order and maintenance of internal security are two important administrative subjects which are highly interdependent on each other. Thus, there is a strong need of coordination, collaboration, and cooperation. That is, three C's are needed between our state government and the union government. These two must be having these three C's between them. That is coordination, collaboration and cooperation must be there between the state government and central government to make people feel safe and secure. Ministry of Home Affairs is the nodal authority or we must say the nodal ministry which, is, which mainly deals with this law and order and internal security issue. Ministry of Home Affairs supervises a large number of government functions and, and agencies operated and administered by the central government. What are the main roles of the Home Ministry of Home Affairs, which is the ministry is concerned with all the matters of maintenance of public peace and order. The staffing and administration of the public services is also undertaken by the Ministry of Home Affairs. The delineation of in the internal boundaries and the administration of union territories. Managing of IPS, that is Indian Police Services, is also a duty of Ministry of Home Affairs. IPS reports directly to the Ministry of Home Affairs. Our Home Ministry maintains several agencies and organizations dealing with police and security issues of nation. Police in the union territories comes directly under MHA, while the state police reports to their respective states. Central Bureau of Investigation, that is our CBI, is also a unit of Ministry of Home Affairs. So one by one, let's have a look at the various armed forces which we have 
in our country. They can be broadly divided in three or four categories. Let's begin with the cent Central Armed Police Forces, that is CAPF, Central Armed Police Forces. First is, we will deal with them one by one. First of among them is Border, border Security Forces, BSF, that is Indian Border Security Force is responsible for guarding India's land borders during peacetime and preventing transborder crimes. It is a central police force operating under the Union Ministry of Home Affairs. The BSF policing capabilities were used in the indo Pak War of 1971 against the Pakistani armed forces in areas where the Indian armed forces were thinly spread. BSF is in one of the Indian police force that has its own air wing, water wing, and also provides choppers, dogs, and other useful services to the state police. Next, coming to the CISF, that is Central Industrial Security Forces. CISF is used to guard our industrial installations around the country owned by the central government as well as securing seaports and airports. CISF also provides security to certain NGOs also. CISF is the largest industrial security force in the world. Industrial sectors like atomic power plants, space installations, defense productions like Indian Ordnance Factories, DRDO, etc. are also protected by CISF. CISF also provides consultancy services to provide private industries as well as other organizations within the Indian government. Next, moving on to Central Reserve Police Force. CRPF is one of the largest central police organizations in the world. It may, its main objective is to assist and help state, Indian territories, law enforcement agencies in maintaining law and order to contain insurgency in their respective states. It is also deployed as an anti-terrorist unit in various regions. It's even operating abroad as part of United Nations peacekeeping mission. It is performing a variety of duties ranging from VIP security to election duties also are being conducted by CRPF. They also guard the vital installations to the counter natural operations are also being undertaken by our CRPF. In case of acute law and order problem, they are deployed to help state police also. Next, moving on to Indo-Tibetan Border Police. ITBP is responsible for security along the Indo-Tibetan border, covering uh, which is approximately 2,000 kilometers. ITBP is mainly trained in mountaineering and disaster management because as they have to work in the difficult terrains of mountains, they have to be trained in the mountaineering and disaster management activities because disasters like landslides, earthquakes, and uh, heavy snowfall, etc., keeps taking place in such areas. It mainly safeguards the Sino-Indian border, that is the border between China and India, which is also known as McMohan Line. Next force is uh, National Security Guards, that is NSG. NSG is a commando unit originally created for counter-terrorism and hostage rescue missions. It is popularly known as Black Cats. It is elite commando wing. NSG has been increasingly tasked with protection of VIPs. This role has expanded in recent years as several politicians have come to view NSG protection as their status symbol. This should not be treated or I must say misused in this manner as it not, should not be seen as the status symbol. It's, uh, coming to the, our next agency that is uh, Railway Protection Force, RPF. RPF is responsible for law enforcement in Indian railways. They maintain discipline on platforms as well as travel inside the trains to keep passengers secure. Railway accidents are also handled by them in the cases of emergencies. Spatial Protection Group, that is SPG. SPG is the Executive Protection Agency of the Government of India. It is responsible for the protection of Prime Minister of India and their immediate families. This force was established mainly after the assassination of Indira Gandhi, who was the Prime Minister at that time, it provides the security 24-7 all over India to Prime Minister and his family members also. 
at any locations across India. After retirement, the protection and security is provided for the next 10 years to that family. Afterwards, it is the responsibility of the respective state government in which that prime minister is residing. Among the Central Armed Police Forces coming to the Sashastra Seema Bal, which is the which was mainly formed in 1963 as a Central Armed Police Force deployed on the borders along Nepal and Bhutan. It means it safeguards the border between India Nepal and India Bhutan. This is the very small Central Armed Police Force. It has just uh, somewhere around 82,000 to 85,000 personals in it. This is uh, their duty on mountainous terrains. So they must also be trained in mountaineering and such activities. Um, let us demarcate where are where which of our forces are working. Uh, this uh, Indo-Pakistan border and India-Bangladesh border. That is which is the Red Cliff line we can say. It is safeguarded by our BSF. That is border security force. And uh, this portion of India-China. Here in Jammu Kashmir, Himachal and Arunachal Pradesh, which is our MacMohan line, it is safeguarded by ITBP, Indo-Tibetan Border Police. This Indo-Nepal boundary in uh, UP and uh, Bihar, Uttarakhand, and this is Bhutan, West Bengal, Assam is safeguarded by SSB. That is Sashastra Seema Bal. Another force, Assam Rifles, is responsible for protecting Indo Myanmar. But uh, recently there has been talks of subsuming uh, the Assam Rifles under BSF only. Moving on to our next section, that is uh, Central Investigation and Intelligence Institutes. CBI is one of the premier institutes, uh, mainly responsible for a wide variety of criminal and national security matters. Central Bureau Investigation is controlled by DOPD, that is Department of Personal, Personal and Training in Ministry of Personal, Public Events and Pension of the Union Government. It is headed by Union Minister who reports directly to the Prime Minister. It is India's official Interpol unit. We are uh, represented by CBI and Interpol. CBI draws its officers from the best of IPS officers from around the country. It is responsible for investigation into various crimes and national security. The agency specializes in investigating crimes involving high-ranking officials, government officials, and politicians. Next is Indian Income Tax Department. It is India's premier financial agency, responsible for a wide variety of financial and fiscal matters. The tax department is controlled by the Ministry of Finance of the union government headed by union ministers who reports directly again to the PM only. It deals with the matters of money laundering, which is a major threat to financial security of the nation. Next is Directorate of Revenue Intelligence. Directorate of Revenue Intelligence is intelligence-based organization responsible for the coordination of India's anti-smuggling efforts. Officers in this organization are drawn from IRS services, that is Indian Revenue Services. Moving on to the, our next agency, that is National Investigation Agency. NIA is agency to combat terror in India, that is the terrorist activities in India. The agency is empowered to deal with terror-related crimes across states without special permission from the state themselves. NIA was created in response to the November 2008 of Mumbai terror attacks as the need of the central agency to combat terrorism was found, it also deals with the drug trafficking and currency counterfeiting. It draws officers from IRS and IPS services. Narcotics Control Bureau. NCB is responsible for, for anti-narcotic operations all over the country. It checks the spread of contraband as well as the cultivation of drugs. Next is Bureau of Police Research and Development, that is BPRND. The objective of the Government of India for the modernization of police forces, it is involved in research relating to the problems confronting the Indian police, the training of different ranks of 
police in India and the introduction of technology at both federal and state level is being done by BPRD, National Crimes Records Bureau. In 1986, National Police Commission recommended the creation of a nodal agency which suggested the maintenance of criminal records at all the police stations in the country to create shareable databases at police station, district, state, and national level. On this recommendation of NPC, NCRB was created. Similar type of agencies, we have central forensic institutions also. There are two main forensic institutions with India. First of them is Central Forensic Science Laboratory. Central Forensic Science Laboratory, that is CFSL, is a wing of Indian Ministry of Home Affairs. It fulfills forensic requirements in the country. It houses the only DNA repository in South and Southeast Asia. There are seven central forensic laboratories in India. The laboratory in New Delhi is under the control of CBI, which investigates cases on its behalf. Next agency of our in forensic institution is National Institute of Criminology and Forensic Sciences. It is to look into the applied aspects of education, training and research in the fields of criminology and forensic sciences to commensurate with the growing needs of the country in general and criminal justice system in India in particular. Apart from these uh, organizations and agencies at the national level, we have various state policies. Each state and union territory of India has a state police force headed by the commissioner of police or director general of police, depending on the uh, respective structure of policing in, within that state. Each state maintains their own police forces. State police is responsible for maintaining law and order in townships of state and the rural areas. States such as Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Maharashtra have taken steps to get their police forces trained by advanced police, police training schools, mainly by Scotland, Scotland Yard, Atlanta City Police of the USA and World Police Academy of Canada and those like of those. Tamil Nadu State Police is at the forefront of advancement with the Tamil Nadu Police Academy, which is now seeking university status. Kerala Police is also the first police force in South Asia to adopt community policing for effective and pro-public friendly initiative and actions. Law and order, which is the matter of stateless and it, uh, which is to be dealt by the state governments under their responsibility, it has mainly four dimensions. It is to ensure that every person is abiding the law. No law must be broken. It is uh, to ensure this is the duty of the state policing. There is a public order in society. This is also must be maintained by the state police. For example, trapping policing, metropolitan police, other state armed police forces, they all come under state police. Crime is prevented. It is also a duty of state police. And the investigation of crime law has been recommended by many other committees and suggested in various remedial measures it is said that investigation and policing must be separated and must be given to two different agencies and a coordination must be established between them at the nodal agency level but still in the present system uh, investigation of crime as well as man maintenance of law and order is still under the same head and they are to be done by the state police only each state in India maintains a state police force, which actually is responsible for maintaining law and order in that respective state. This was a broad view about policing agencies, law and order, and internal security uh, maintenance agencies. Now, moving on to the next topic. On the basis of expert views, the admission by the government, perception, perception of the civil society and parliament, it can logically be said that India is facing five major internal security challenges. These challenges can broadly be termed or divided in these categories as terrorism, militancy, insurgency, religious fundamentalism, left-wing extremism, which is also known as the Naxalism. These five are the major internal security challenges. We will be dealing with separately in subsequent videos. In subsequent short videos, we will be doing about all five of them. And along with that, we will be covering all the remaining topics like 
cyber security uh, which is the responsibility of cert we are having and like that organization illegal immigration ethnic conflicts financial threats etc money laundering etc all these topics we will be dealing in our subsequent videos thank you for watching